protests in Costa Rica. And they shut the roads down. And they block the roads so the country can't function as normal, which is very interesting compared to in the United States where we just go at government buildings and police stations and stuff, which is equally reasonable because that's who's tormenting us. Um, but they do this to shut down the entire economy altogether so it forces the government to react because then they won't make any money either. Curious. Here you go. Gotta do what you gotta do to make change happen, I guess, right? But it's nice because a couple weeks, I didn't have a car, motorcycle, I didn't even have a bicycle. And I, <laughs> I felt like I was at a disadvantage. Turns out now, I'm the one getting around and nobody else can. And, uh, because I walk everywhere. So I'm built for this. <laughs> and, uh, Everybody else is trapped in their cars for hours upon hours a day, uh, turning around, trying to find old routes. They got roads through the mountains that are like old school, not so safe. Uh, the sides of the roads and the cliffs are collapsing. Pardon me, I'm gonna take off the mask. And uh, yeah, so if you take the old roads and the routes through the mountains, you gotta, uh, struggle a little more and it takes a lot longer because a lot of the roads aren't paved through the mountains so this is highway 34 or the costanera or the road that goes along the pacific coast so kind of like a that pacific highway in california but without this there's really no way around and people get stuck i mean there's openings that happen Every once in a while, they open it for ambulances coming by emergency vehicles, but the average person, as you can see, is stuck in traffic like this for, I mean, if they're taking a half hour or an hour ride, it could take them six, eight hours nowadays, and it's an interesting way of doing things. I hope they affect change because this stops the country. It stops the whole country. My buddy, Tim, who you've seen in other YouTube posts and Instagram posts with me over the years, is flying in today. And he's he should be landing, I don't know, shortly in a half hour or an hour or so in San Jose, which is typically an hour and a half drive away from where I'm staying in Hako. But today, it could take him six hours. He might have to stay at the airport until 6 p.m. He may have to stay overnight in San Jose and try to leave at 5 in the morning because they have overnight driving restrictions. Thankfully, hotels here in Costa Rica are not that expensive, but I'm getting in shape, good shape and fit because I walk everywhere anyway. So this is nothing new to me. I had to walk the attorney's assistant to sign some paperwork to send back to the U.S. that I've had for, or we've had for a few days. And this issue has prevented my attorney, Andres, from getting to me. And also, obviously, because I don't have a vehicle yet, prevented me from getting to him. Definitely beneficial to have a motorcycle. You can get around this sometimes. Way more beneficial right now to have a bicycle than a, any type of motorized vehicle. And at least in my opinion, on foot is your best option. Obviously a bicycle is a little bit quicker, but on foot is not bad. Cannot complain. I came down here for the warm weather and the heat, so I'm getting exactly what I was looking for, <laughs> for better or worse, right? So I can't complain. I think these people could complain a little bit more than me. I still have quarter mile to go, not too far before I'm at my house, apartment. No complaints, it's not bad. I like walking, I like walking in Costa Rica even better.
but a curious societal evolution for us where things shut down. This doesn't necessarily happen in the United States. As we've seen, protesters get in the road and psychopaths will run them over. United States citizens don't have the same moral compass that people here in Costa Rica do. We in the United States don't value life very much. Costa Rica, they value life very much because life is good here, where life in the United States is quite miserable and everybody justifies their misery somehow, some way. Life isn't miserable here, so people want to stay alive. They want to keep other people alive. They cherish the souls of humans. Where in the United States, I don't know too many humans that still have souls. It's the truth of it. So, right now, this is life in Costa Rica. They have alternating days that people can drive based on the number on their license plate. I think it's the first number on their license plate. Odds are one day, evens are another day, so on and so forth. It's a little more specific than that, but I don't have a car, so I don't really care right now, and I'm not looking into those details, because I walk everywhere, and I will be riding a bike when I get a bicycle. When there's protests going on, it's completely shut down. When the police or the government yeah, police are checking license plates, it does go slow as well. They only do that, it seems, from what I've seen on Fridays, when people are traveling to vacation, Taco is a destination vacation place. A lot of people come from San Jose and all over the country on Fridays, whether they're legally allowed to or not because they're license plate. Then they go home on Sunday or Monday. So typically you'll also see the police checking on a Sunday night, Sunday afternoon. And people that are with the wrong license plate are getting pulled over and ticketed and fined. And trying to escape sometimes, turning around quick and running the other way and trying to go through the mountain roads to get home. Because the police here, as much as they enforce certain things like that, from what I've noticed, they don't want to work too hard. Like they're just doing it because they're told to do it. And they probably get enough money from the few people that they stop that they could call it a day and it kind of keeps people in check not to drive when they're not supposed to on a day that they're not supposed to and I am getting back to my place now so that wasn't so bad documents signed the most informal legal process ever in a good way I like it stopped on the side of a road got myself a little Starbucks coffee to fuel my walk back Andres the assistant of my attorney Andres I got him a big water bottle out of appreciation and cool him down and hydrate him as he's getting back to the office in Atenas, which is Spanish for Athens, like Greece. Beautiful city. So Atenas is one of the most perfect climates here in Costa Rica, a country of many different perfect climates. Atenas has the reputation of having the best climate and weather system. So if you guys are ever in Costa Rica and you want to check out a beautiful city, Atenas is a very nice city. I hear great things about Atenas. I've been there. It's very nice. I didn't get to travel around too much, but enough to see what people were talking about. And now I'm back here at my apartment complex in Hako. I am going to go back to my pups, Hercules and Jasmine. You guys have seen them before. You'll see them again. This was my journey to sign legal paperwork the modern way in Costa Rica. Hope you enjoyed, hope this was informative a little bit about what's going on here in Central America and how they do their protests. This is what they have to do to get their lives back on track, which I absolutely understand, can appreciate and relate to. Things shut down in the United States and that's why I came here. So it's 90 degrees and it's not 90 degrees, 80 degrees, maybe 85 degrees, beautiful out as you can see. And this is the middle of the winter here, so I'm super excited for everything else to come. I don't want winter the way we know it in the New York City metropolitan area and the tri-state area ever again. If my winters have a little bit of rain throughout the day, which is, you know, here it's rainy season, their winters, I'm loving that. So stay tuned, subscribe, like, share.